Hello fellow collectors, I hope you're all doing really well today, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're in the UK then I'm very happy to report that HMV currently are running their 2 for £15 sale on their premium titles. I'm a big fan of this line from HMV which, if you're from the US, features a majority of Warner Archive titles and a small smattering of some others. Unfortunately, if you are in another country, HMV do only ship to the UK. The premium titles all come with a great slipcover, they are all spine numbered and include the date of the film on the spine too, which is something that I quite like. Inside it tends to vary a little bit, but the most basic will usually come with a slipcover, Blu-ray and some art cards. In others it might come with a DVD, the Blu-ray and art cards, and in others still you might have a digital download, DVD, Blu-ray, art cards and even possibly a poster or a small booklet. Now the usual cost that HMV sell these for is 2 for £25, which is far from outrageous, but their mostly twice a year sale of 2 for £15 is such a fantastic deal, I can highly recommend that you make the most of it. Unfortunately. Unlike other brands or distributors, HMV don't run the 2 for 15 at any set times of the year. It just seems to be a bit random, so you've got to keep your eyes peeled. Well, I think that's enough of an introduction to them, so let's get into my top 6 picks. Ah, 6 you ask? Why not a top 5? Well, I'll tell you. I've done a top 6 because you of course have to buy 2 at a time to make the most of the sale, and of course it lets me sneak another recommendation in, which is never a bad thing. So let's get right into it. First up we have a streetcar named Desire. Now I bought this one simply because I knew it was a classic. Honestly the majority of things I knew about it came from that Simpsons episode where Marge stars in a theatrical version, which is a great episode, so my knowledge going in was minimal at best. Marlon Brando and Vivian Lee star in this Tennessee Williams screenplay and directed by Elia Kazan. I put off watching this one for a good while, and I think it was probably over six months from when I bought it to when I watched it. But when I did eventually put it on, I was blown away. As impressive as Brando's performance is here, I think Vivian Lee makes everyone else look like an amateur. She is astonishingly good and thoroughly believable, and just completely draws you in. I'd classify it as a domestic drama, but that barely does it justice. You have here the heat of New Orleans, the poverty, madness, abuse, fear, romance, unrequited desire and tension. You are drawn up in the characters' joys and in their bitterness. This is a film that I'm so happy to have come across and watched. It's easy to see why it won four Oscars and was nominated for many more. If you were on the fence about getting it, I hope that's tipped you into the purchase because you won't regret it. Next and we have Jeremiah Johnson. Now, I'm a big fan of Robert Redford, the man has an astonishing filmography, and it's pretty rare that I don't enjoy his films. This was thankfully no exception, because I had a great time watching this, and it also happens to be the film from which this classic gif originates. Directed by Sidney Pollock, this one is set in the mid-1800s, and it follows a man who has seemingly had enough of normal life, and sets out to seek solitude in the Rocky Mountains, and live and subsist as a mountain man. He arrives with fairly little knowledge, but stumbles across something of a mentor who gives him the tools and information he needs to fully, and more safely, embrace life in the wilderness. The film then follows his journey, which includes brushes with Native Americans, other mountain men, and settlers. It's a fantastic ride which has plenty of joy and plenty of tension. Things build up exceptionally well to a great finale here. And in some small ways this one reminded me of All Is Lost, which is a much more recent film starring Redford, who's all alone in the ocean. So if you've seen that and enjoyed it, I think this one will be right up your street as well, and of course vice versa. Now this next one of my recommendations is very high up on my favourite films of all time list, and that is Alfred Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief. This one is a bit of a prized possession for me, as it features something that is quite unusual for the premium collection, and that's a glossy slipcover, which I think makes it look fantastic and particularly eye-catching when I display it, which, let's face it, is fairly often given my love for the film. With a stunning cast of Cary Grant and Grace Kelly, Hitchcock expertly directs this absolute classic. This one is full of suspicion, intrigue and mystery, as well as plenty of wonderful humour. 
Grant and Kelly, both at the peak of their powers, have exquisite chemistry and play perfectly off each other. Grant as the retired jewel thief, and Kelly as the wealthy heiress. There have been a string of heists pulled off in the gorgeously shot French Riviera, and Grant's character, John Roby, is of course the chief suspect. But, who done it? That's the question, and you'll have to watch to find out. Then we have Key Largo, another one on my list boasting an incredible cast, with Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, and Edward G. Robinson. Dare I say it, but this might well be my favourite bogey film, though with the caveat that I haven't seen Casablanca in quite some time. But regardless, I absolutely loved this one, and it was a top-tier blind buy for me. The story takes place, as you might expect, at Key Largo in Florida, during a hurricane where our cast is more or less trapped in a hotel that's mostly empty, as the winter holiday season has ended. Bogey has arrived to see his former army friend's widow, played by Lauren Bacall, whose father owns the hotel. However, upon arriving, despite the season being over, he sees that there are a few others staying in the hotel, who seem just a bit off. Why are they there, and who's the man who won't come out of his room? And that's where I'll leave the story, which is hopefully just enough to whet your appetite for more. A real classic Bogey and Bacall film that is definitely one of my favourite film noirs. Next is Mrs. Miniver, featuring Greer Garson in an Oscar-winning role, Walter Pidgeon and Teresa White, who is wonderful here, just like she was in the best years of our lives. Garson is the true star of this one, though, as you might expect winning the Oscar. It's set during World War II and made in 1942, so long before the end of the war. It's a patriotic picture that wants to bolster the public resolve and encourage in the midst of national hardship. As it alludes to in the blurb, while Mrs Miniver might not be a soldier on the front lines or an RAF pilot on bombing runs, nevertheless she, she is just as important to the war effort. Keeping her stiff upper lip in the face of dire circumstances and troubles, she keeps her family strong and together in the midst of uncertainty. It's a really fantastic watch, and made all the more poignant, I think, because of when it was made, and they had no idea when the end of the war would be, nor what its outcome would be. And last but not least, we have by far the longest film on my list of top picks, and that's David Lean's Dr. Shivago, sitting at pretty much exactly three hours long, though it's one of those older films with an intermission, which is something that I quite enjoy in these epics. Time for a fresh cup of tea and a snack, and then right back into the action. Omar Sharif heads this one, along with Julie Christie and Geraldine Chaplin, who together form the love triangle which sits at the heart of this film. It takes place during the Russian Revolution, and the chaos and change that ensued. As you might expect from a David Lean film, the cinematography is just as epic as the story itself, and gives grand scale to everything that is happening. Instead of trying to summarise the story, I think all I'll say is that this film is worth every minute of its 200 minute runtime, and absolutely worth your time. This film was a rare case where I felt fully transported into such a rich and deep world that I found entirely believable. It was a real journey, and one that I'm very glad that I took. And so, we've reached the end of my recommendations. If you are in the UK, I'd encourage you again to make the most of the 2 for £15 sale, as it is just such a fantastic deal. And I think the premium collection is just a great line of films, and again, one that I'm a big fan of. I've added about 10 titles myself during this sale, so do let me know if you've picked up any new titles. Or if you have any thoughts about the films I've talked about, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.